are three. Is that what your Bible says? For there are three. Now the Bible says out of the mouth of how many witnesses? Okay, the Bible said we're going to give a little security blanket here. For there are three, that's a little bit more than two. For there are three that what? Bear record in heaven. There's three that bear record in heaven. Who is it? The Father. The Word. <laughs> Boy, don't you like that name right there? I'm telling you, Jesus is more than just a man that walked on this earth. He's more than just a prophet. He's more than just a... He's the final Word. He's the final authority. He is the Word. So you've got the Father, you've got the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Now run that math. You run that math, good neighbor. There's three that bear a record, and all three are one. I love my God. I don't know about you, but he's got Vishnu, Brahma, and uh, Hose, uh, all those weird guys. He's got them beat. And, the, and there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood, and these agree in one. Verse number nine, watch what the Bible says. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is what? Y'all ever saw that sign? And when you went, you got to go back to probably elementary school. They had that, they call it Pac-Man, that, that big V. The greater than, less than sign. So over here is man, over here is God, and the mouth will be open up like that right there. God is greater than man. So listen to what the Bible says. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Watch what your Bible says. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave his Son. Now, According to this paper here, they say that they're the record. They say they hold the greatest record. They say that we've got the world record. But honey, they are mistaken because the witness of God is greater than the witness of man. Adam and Eve live longer than this dude in Indonesia. Seth lived, I mean, he might have been, he might have been, he might have been Abel on his years, but not Cain. Cain slew Abel. Boy, Adam knew how to raise Cain, didn't he? <laughs> might have been a Baptist. The witness of God is greater than the witness of man. So here's what I say this morning, Brother Bill. Just throw that out with the trash. Longest lived, look up in here, my hind leg. If he's the longest lived man in the record books, I'm a white Cherokee Indian. Verse number 11 of 1 John, and this is the record. I, hey, I'm glad I got the record book. I got, hey, they may have Guinness Book of World Records. They may have their, I've got the record book. The Word of God. Watch what it says. And this is the record that God hath given us eternal life. And this life is in the Son. Now, watch how God calculates life. The longest lived. Verse 11. And this is the record that God hath given to us. 145 years? 96 years? A thousand years? What, let's, go, let's go to Methuselah. 969 years. No, 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 no. How many knows Jesus this morning? How many saved by the grace of God? How many knows your name's been written down in heaven? And this is the record, not that trash. This is the record. I've got the record books. I've got the record books that I'm going to live longer than this hat 
in Indonesia because I've been given eternal life. Woo! God gave me this message just a few minutes ago while I was in there studying about Ken Al. I just look it up. We know one of the headlines just pro- disproven one more time how they think they've got all the answers. Look up in here, Jack. We've got the record book. And by the way, do you know what my record book says? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'm not going to put on you more than you can bear. I'm a yoke. Take upon me my yoke for my yoke is easy and my burden's light. That's the record book that I'm listening to. The record book that I'm listening to says, oh death where's thy sting? Oh grave where's thy victory? This man don't have hope. This man don't even know if he's going to heaven or hell. He don't have a clue. He's just tired of living. He wishes to die at age 145. Say brother Adam, do you really believe he's the oldest living man? No! Methuselah beat him. This proves once again that they dis, what's the word I'm looking for? They disprove again or they disrepresent, they discard the record book. If you want to know who the oldest man is, God was gracious enough to give us a record book and preserve it so that we could read and understand. Listen, you, we don't have the ability to go back in time. God has only given man the ability to go in time, go forward in time. You say, you mean a time machine? No, there was a time I used to be 16 years old and then one morning I woke up my 17. I never woke up one morning after 16 and turned 15 or 14 or 13. You can't go back, you can go forward. And God knows that man can't go back. God knows that man can't go back to the beginning. But you know what God did? He was gracious enough, hallelujah, to take to take a book and to write down in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1, in the beginning was God. To let us know what was there when we can't go back and see it. But if you listen to the likes of Harold Dawkins or Bill Nye, they can tell you what happened in the beginning, but they don't take into account the record book. You know what this is this morning? This is a history book. It's spelled H-I-S dash S-T-O-R-Y. His story. It just, I don't know about y'all, but to, just to say that this is the, why don't, why don't they just, why don't they just say, look, this is the oldest man alive today. This is the oldest man in current events that we know that has lived this long. But to outright say that he holds the world record says that they're spitting on God's word says that they're taking God completely, totally out of the equation and what they're saying is this book this morning is irrelevant. It's crazy. Let me just read to you something. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not, which is the son, which is this UK newspaper, he that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave his son. They aren't even taking into consideration the record book because they don't know the record. We got false information this morning. We got trash. So when we leave here and you hear somebody say, did you hear? Because listen, do you know, people are saying, well, you got to discredit the internet. You can't believe everything you read here on the internet. Drudge changed that mess. He posts a story. They have to cover it Monday. When you wake up Monday morning, you go into work, you turn the radio on, you come home, you listen to the news. Guess what's going to be on the news this week? The oldest living man ever recorded in history. You know why they're reporting on it? Because Drudge put it on the homepage of his website on the internet. He's forcing them to cover the news that they really don't want to cover. By the way, let me just tell you something about the news. They're all a bunch of liars. 
And you know what they say? Y'all don't believe nothing you hear on the internet because that's a place of conspiracies and, and crazy ideas. And it's just, you know, it just, it's just, it's false. And f no, 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 no. The people on the internet aren't bought and paid for like the guys on the TV. I think I'm going to listen to the person that ain't for sale. I mean, that's what the preachers told me back in the 90s when I was, you know, cutting my teeth on old-time religion. They said, praise God, you ain't for sale. I'm just, you know, I'm just rambling this morning. I'm, I, I'm just glad I've got the right record book. And this is the record that God hath given unto us. Let me see, let me see if there's one over here in 3 John. 3 John. Y'all ever read 3 John before? It's a long book. A long book over here in Third John. Ch -ch -ch -ch. And we also bear record, and ye know that our record is true. Talking about the Word of God, verse 13. I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee, but I trust that I shall see thee shortly and shall speak face to face. Peace be unto thee, our friend. I, hey, look, over and over again, I go, you go to first, you go to John chapter number one. This is the record. But if you go to Pigeon Forge, they got the Guinness Book of World Records. The Ripley's, believe it or not, the R Ripley's, believe it or not, Guinness Book of World Records. This is the Guinness Book of World Records. You want to read about a man that got swallowed by a fish and survived to tell about it after living in his gut for three days and three nights? His name was Jonah. That's, the, that's in the record. And when Jesus was on this earth, you, when Jesus preached, you know what he preached? From the record, man shall leave father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be one. That's Genesis. Jesus even said, as Jonas was in the belly of the well three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. You know what he's doing? He's preaching the record. Aren't you glad this morning you got the record? And the, re the, re the record is clear and the record says everything's going to be all right. And the record says that God's in control. And the record says this thing must come to pass. And the record says that Jesus is coming again. And the record says you're not going to hell. And the record says that we're going to heaven. And the record says praise God you can shout anyway no matter if the world's with you or without you. We are his children. We are the sheep of his pasture. We Hey listen, we've got the truth this morning would you hate to wake up and know you're a Muslim what? What? who do I have to kill today I got waiting on a virgin them boys waiting on them virgins they better hope they eat male virgins when they get there they're going to be sure disappointed <laughs> I say we ought to dig a pit pour Sonny's barbecue in it praise God throw a bunch of sand crooked nose sand monkeys in it and a bunch of towel toting ragheads and that way they know they're going to hell when they die right. stupid you know what they're doing in Germany I read this this week you know what they're doing in Germany they're cutting off the heads of pigs and hogs and they're placing them on their borders <laughs> trying, to keep, trying to keep the Muslims back Billy Kelly said, why are they wasting all that good hog for? We'd, we'd be eating up things if they'd just stop wasting them hogs. And all God's people said amen for Smithfield. And all God's people said amen for bacon. Amen. I can't remember the verse off the top of my head, but it's in Acts. You know what it says? If you kill it, you can grill it. I, I, I'll see y'all next Sunday. I'll give you the verse in Acts. If you can kill it, the Bible says you're free to grill it. This crowd talking about they can't have pigs and hogs. Give me a break. Trying to live by the law. How in the world are you going to wake up every morning and go to work without a piece of bacon? I mean, that's just something. You can't, you can't do it. Amen, Brother Doug. Praise God. Say amen right there. You got to have bacon quarter pound praise God amen bone in look up in here the real thing the real thing amen all God's people said
You got a song that'll fit what I just said? We got the record. It's a well of pure water. Yeah, you know that old song. Come up here and let's do that song. I'm going to save these stones for another. I mean, I really got some stuff on these stones. And y'all didn't want to be here till 3 o'clock anyway. I got a lot of stuff on these stones. Can I just give you one of them real quick? When David picked up those stones, go read it. 1 Samuel, read it this week. Get ready for next Sunday. 1 Samuel 17, verse 34. When David picked up those stones, he didn't just pick them up. Read what he did with them. He picked them up and then he put them in. I said he picked them up and then he put them in. Has he ever picked you up before and put you in? If he's never picked you up and put you in, you may not be a Stone Age Christian. Hey, when he, hey, I'm glad he didn't leave me the way he found me, praise God. He picked me up and put me in. I may preach on these stones anyway. I'm getting a little liberty right now. Thank God, five smooth. We know they're saved because he went down there for five. That's a number of grace. And what was it that brought God down to man? Grace. But he had to take the sword and lay it to the side and pick up the staff before he could ever go get the rocks. You know why Jesus stepped off the throne in glory, robed himself in flesh, and didn't come down here as king of kings and lord of lords? Because it wasn't Revelation 19 time yet. He had to pick up a few stones before he went back to glory. Stone age Christian. Man, I feel like preaching it all of a sudden. Oh, my gracious. I may get some more this week. I've been really chewing on them verses, just chewing on them. I like the word chose, too. He chose. He chose. He chose. He had a specific number in mind, too. Uh Uh-oh. Five smooth stones. He chose them. In other words, they were smooth. He wasn't looking for any rough Christians. If you're rough, he don't want nothing to do with you. Let's stand together. Can you sing that old? Yeah, the blessed old book. Hey, it's more than the blessed old book. It's the blessed old record. The record is clear. What song is that? The record is clear. That's in a song somewhere. We've got the record this week. I, I, when I read that, I got so ticked off, brother. I said, that man, he ain't holding the world record. It, that goes to Methuselah. Hey, somewhere in glory, Methuselah is ticked off that they're giving this man some glory. Oldest living, longest living man in the world. That's Methuselah's record. Ain't nobody broke it since. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? I wonder how many people will take that right there as true gospel. Say, look, can you believe it's the older? I hope some little old gray headed saint and their little teenage grandson or great grandson comes up and says, Nana, did you know that we found the oldest living man? And Nana goes in there to the closet and she pulls out the family Bible and she opens it up to the book of Genesis and said, I've got record that that record right there is hogwash. And hit him over the head with it. We got record this morning. We got the record, by the way, and it's proven by three great witnesses. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. (laughs) Lord, I love you this morning. I thank you for the record books that we have. God, we know that there's record of it. We know we've got the Word. We know that it's true. We know that it's proven right. Father, I pray that you'd help us to live by the record. Help us die by the record. Lord, I pray that you'd help us live the record and work with the record. We need the record in these last days. We need it now more than ever. As much as they're trying to chop it up, chew it up, and try to tell us it's discredited, God, help us remind us one more time this morning, your word is true and it's forever settled in heaven. Come hell, high water, sink, sink, live, live or die, we've got the record. And we'll die by the record book. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a well of pure water when I'm thirsty and dry. Bread when I'm hungry and worn. When the battle is raging, it's my faithful sword. A 
shelter from a life's troubled storm. Yeah. It's a light to my pathway, a lamp to my feet. When this world gets so dark, you can't see. I'm not made a change in one word that it says, but it sure made a change in me. in my hand I'm reminded that I owe a great debt to all other martyrs who burned at the stake and coated with their dying breath now it's critics are many believers are few but there's one thing I found to be true God's people said. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, all three of my children have gotten saved this past year, and I thank God for that. We fought hell by the acre enough thus far just for that to take place. And they're wanting to get baptized, and I'm kind of him hauling around because I can't stand hot weather. I really can't. But this is what I've got on my heart, and I want to do it within the next couple of weeks very soon. We're going to have... Sunday service in the park. There's a place right up here in Clarksville where they got a little creek runs right through the park. What's it called? Grant's Park? Pitts, Pitts Park. Pitts Park. Yes, sir. I'm going to go up there and I'm on dunk. Addison, Adrian, Aniston. I'll probably hold Addison under a little bit longer than I'm supposed to. And uh, <laughs> let him know I brought him into this world. I can take him out. Praise God. And I'm going to get my granddad up there. I may baptize him. He needs to get wet. He don't like the water. And we'll go up there in a couple of Sundays. What we'll do is we'll meet here at 10 o'clock for Sunday school. Those that want to follow me, we'll leave here at 10. Go up there. There you got a gazebo. No smoking. If I see you smoking, we're going to put it out. Brother Bill, leave him cigarettes at home. We're going we're gonna to go to the gazebo, and we're going to have a little service. And I may try to get old Mark Wheeler to bring his guitar and, and see if we can work that out and have service in the park. And then what we'll do is I'll go down there in the creek and baptize my youngins. And I know uh, I, Mandy's been bugging me to death about her boy, Hunter. What a name, Hunter. He's been wanting to get baptized. So I'm going to get Brother Tim, Miss Deborah. And uh, so we're going to do that in a couple of weeks. And I think that'd be good September. It's going to be a, a little bit cooler. Instead of 92, it might be 91 degrees, and y'all can handle that. And uh, we'll go down in the water and baptize them. And I tell you what, I've talked to Eric about it. I'm wanting to do a big newspaper article. Local pastor has service in the park, baptizes converts, maybe draw up some new, you know, attention in this area. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of nervous about doing it, but Larry Brown... He did a baptism in a creek one time in North Augusta, South Carolina. You ain't going to believe what happened, Miss Martha. He got this man out of his wheelchair, and he took his oxygen tank, and he left it in his wheelchair. Larry went down there to baptize him. And Brother Waters, when he got down there in the water, he said, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and he went to baptize him in the creek, and it was muddy water, and the water was moving kind of quick. And the man just slipped out of his hands. And he, he went to bring him up. And he said, uh-oh. 
he said he he said he saw about six deacons on the on the banks of the river taking cell phones and wallets throwing them off on the banks of the river he said he had about six deacons dive in look like Olympic swimmers at the Olympics and he said somebody find that old man he's going downstream and he don't know how to swim and luckily the current carried him up on the bank Larry said he ain't been back to church since and I don't know what his problem is so hopefully we won't have any issues but I'm looking forward to that uh, we'll have service Sunday service in the park and we'll just have a good time of fellowship it's probably what 15 minutes from here maybe at the most 15 20 minutes and we'll go up there and we'll have we'll have a good day in the park Amen. We love Miss Amanda. Oh. So don't open it till you get to Fellowship Hall. <laughs> Did Brother Waters get that card for her? Did y'all fix some tea cakes for the birthday? If I come to church one more time and there ain't no tea cakes in this church, we voting somebody out. You don't, you, you don't take away the drugs from a drug addicted man and not expect some I ain't been the same since I really ain't and if and I'm rebuking you in the name of the Father the Son the Holy Ghost I all you know what I almost did I almost called her last night at 9.30 and said hey pour me some of them pancakes that you make called tea cakes and don't let Ken, don't let Doug, out, don't let Alex, don't let nobody know. You just sneak them to me. Do you know I got in trouble? We left Wednesday night after the tea cakes came. And she chewed me out going, up, you ain't ever one of them. You think I care? If something's that good, you, <laughs> you think I'm going to share? Praise God, I'm the greediest thing you've ever seen when it comes to those. Grandmother grandmother she Marsha Waters made tea cakes I'm talking you know I bit into it and this is what I said on Wednesday night I said my mind just went back to Forest Hill Drive in Hapeville Georgia that's the last time I had that taste on my it brought back that memory that fast tea cake and I'm talking it was a is lightweight light as a feather I put on about 50 pounds after I ate those feathers. Woo! Thank you, Jesus, for tea cakes. I'm telling you. If we know you're fixing to take that celestial dirt nap, we're, I want you to make me a truckload before you leave this world. <laughs> Wait, I'm, don't worry about Jason. I need to be, I need, I need an insurance policy on tea cakes. If I hear anybody talking bad about Ms. Marsha, I'm going to cut your throat off. <laughs> but if you don't bring them back, I'm going to vote you out. And all God's people said, can you believe that grandmother took my mind back to Forest Hill Drive tea cakes? Tea cakes. That's the last time I had them. I can't remember if you cooked them or maybe your sister. I had that thought. I was like, wow, that is really good. And it's making me hungry right now thinking about it. Praise God. Amen. I just thought I'd brag on I thought I'd brag on the Lord Marsha for a minute. Amen. Turn around, shake hands, fellowship.